If you want gift ideas for Mother's Day that are unique, handmade, and crochet, then you want to stick around because I have several project ideas for you. Hey guys, it's Abby, the maker and designer behind So Homey. Mother's Day is approaching and every year I sit down and ask myself, you know, what will I give my mom for Mother's Day? And it never fails. I just go to my default. I make her her favorite cookies and then she loves them, of course. But I haven't really been very creative the past few years, uh, especially, you know, whenever I was in college, that was like easy and cheap for me to do for her. So anyway, again, she never complained. She loves those things. So <laughs> this year I wanted to incorporate something crochet because it is a big part of my life. And honestly, it's been a long time since I've actually made her something. So I started looking for project ideas that I could crochet for Mother's Day and I found quite a few ideas. I'll let you judge whether they're good or not, but I went to compile them in a video similar to my crochet stash busting projects, which I'll link up here and you should definitely go check that one out. There's a lot of ideas and patterns included in that video too, but this one is going to be more geared towards Mother's Day. Of course, these ideas are not limited to only Mother's Day. They also apply to birthday and Christmas or just whenever you want to gift that lovely lady in your life something. Now, you're probably tired of me babbling on and on about this, so let's go ahead and get into the first project idea. So the first project idea is crochet flowers. Now, I'm not talking about replacing a bouquet of real flowers with crochet flowers. I'm thinking more smaller flowers that you can use for decorating. Crochet flowers would be a great gift idea just because you can top them on cards or gift boxes and they take up very little amount of yarn, plus they don't take up much of your time because a lot of patterns are super simple. This is actually the project idea that I went with for my mom's gift because I had already found her a few other things, so I just put them inside of a box and then I made her a card and glued a crochet flower on top, and then I topped the box with the uh, crochet flowers which I might as well just go ahead and grab it and show you. So before I show you the box, um, the crochet flowers that I'm thinking are like this. Uh, I swatched a few, I crocheted a few different types and um, I went with the bigger one, but I also like this small one, it's really cute. Um, I made a short actually on this, a short video uh, showing you how to crochet this flower. Uh, but what I did was I just made this and then I glued it onto a piece of paper and then I wrote Happy Mother's Day and then I would, um, wrote on the inside of a card just a small little note for my mom. I'll flash up a picture up here so that you can actually see but I've already wrapped it and I don't want to take it out to show you. Um, so that's one idea and then I also went ahead and used the same pattern as those purple flowers for these white ones and I just tied them around this box and this is her gift box. Now I did not come up with this idea, the flowers were my own idea, um, but I actually showed this in the previous stash busting project. Um, I really liked it and it comes from Two Girls blog or Two Girls pattern. I'll make sure to have all of the links down below, um, all of the correct information if I say it wrong, I'm sorry. But yeah, I really took that idea and then made it my own for my mom's box. So the flower pattern that's actually in their blog, I didn't follow that one. I did the version that's in my video. It's uh, both are very very simple. Mine just turned out bigger than what um, the blog post has. I really like this project idea because it doesn't use much yarn at all. I had some crochet thread and that's what I made my flower out of but you could also, um, this one was actually made out of a cotton worsted weight yarn. So really the sky's the limit with flowers. You can use any yarn weight uh, and then any corresponding hook. 
And if your mom has a favorite flower, then you might just Google crochet whatever type of flower and then add pattern at the end. And I'm sure that there's a pattern out there somewhere because I came across a lot of different types of flowers. Also, you can use the crochet flowers and put them on top of cards and there are a lot of good ideas. If you just uh, Google, actually let me show you, let me pull it up. I found a lot of cute ones. So if you go to Google and you just search for crochet Mother's Day cards, um, you can find a lot of really good ideas. I like this first one where there's a crochet border as well. Um, that would just add a really cute element, uh, very dainty and elegant. I like this idea. But also, I really like the bouquet idea. You just crochet a few of the same flowers and then add tissue paper or even a coffee filter and then just tie a ribbon on it. This would be a really simple idea to make a card as well. And then, um, yeah, just looking through here, you can see that there's a lot of different types of flowers that you could crochet and just put on top of a, a card. So that was the idea behind crochet flowers. Then I also must mention one last idea. It was actually my boyfriend, so I have to give him credit for this, but he said you can make magnets out of the crochet flowers. So essentially the same idea, you just make a flower and then you glue it to the magnet and then um, you know give those to mom. Uh, you could pair that with maybe some photos if you have, well, of course you'd have kids. So then you could gift um, the magnets in conjunction with some updated photos of your kids, uh, maybe to grandma or even mom. It'd be really cute too if your kids are old enough to crochet these flowers and then give those to mom. Uh, just an idea. So that's really the idea behind the crochet flowers. So our next category of patterns is kitchen accessories. This idea really came to me because, as I mentioned previously, I always baked my mom her favorite cookies for Mother's Day. And again, I probably did that for like six years in a row. And she did love it. But um, you can also, um, if this is something that you do, maybe you could also crochet a hand towel or a dishcloth or even a pot holder. Just add that to the baked goods and then she has something that she can enjoy immediately the cookies or whatever it is, but then she also has something to keep that reminds her of you every time she uses it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or very time consuming. Um, that's another reason why I like this project idea is because hand towels, dish cloths, and pot holders, all of those don't take a lot of yarn and then they also won't take a ton of your time either. So I have a few patterns that I'd like to share with you that I came across. And the first one is called the Borrow Hand Towel by Two of Wands. So this design is part of her purposeful pattern series that she does every year for Earth Day. And one dollar of her proceeds for the purchase of this pattern goes to Kiss the Ground. And you can read more about that in her, um, on the page for that pattern. Well, she describes the thermal stitch that she used as rustic and sophisticated, which I would totally agree. I just think it's a really pretty design. And it's also a towel that can be used in the bathroom or the kitchen. So your mom could really choose uh, where she needed it or not. This is an easy level pattern and the skills that are required are the double crochet, the front post double crochet, which is just another version of a double crochet. It's not hard, I promise. And then the slip stitch. And then her finish size for this is gonna be 14 and a half inches by 18 inches. And the yarn that she used is Lion Brand Reup which is a worsted weight yarn made out of recycled cotton. So I think that this is a really great uh, design for mom or grandma. So the next pattern I found is called Through the Window Hand Towel by Alexandra from I Love Knots. 
That's like, I like your eyeball. Now, I found this design on Ravelry, and reading through her blog post is actually a holiday-inspired uh, hand towel just because of the color she used, the red and the white, but you could definitely choose two colors that would match mom's kitchen. And I think it's really cute. I like how there's just a pop of red every now and then um, repeated over that hand towel. So the yarn that you would need for this one would be a worsted weight cotton and you could use uh, Lily Sugar and Cream that's at major um, craft stores. Uh, you just need two colors and then the finished measurements for this one are about 16 inches by about 26 and a half inches. And then the skills that are required for this pattern are the single crochet, the double crochet, the slip stitch, the chain, and then you'd also have to know how to change colors. And I would say that those are all pretty much beginner level skills. And then the next two patterns that I found are from the same person, and I just really like both designs. Um, she, her name is Melissa, and she's from Woods and Wool, and she created uh, these patterns for dishcloths. And the first one is called My Favorite Dish Cloth. It's made from a worsted weight cotton yarn that comes from Knit Picks. It's called Dishy. I've actually personally never used it before. I almost bought it actually during the pandemic, but they didn't have the color that I want, wanted. And yeah, I just never got around to actually getting it, but I really want to try this one. Uh, she talks about it a lot in her Instagram stories, so I'm sure that it's a really good one. And she talks a lot about this pattern for her dishcloths, so definitely go check this one out too. You need, uh, for this one, you need the Dishy Twist, which is just a uh, two-colored uh, yarn, but it's twisted in the yarn, so it's already, um, you don't have to hold two strands to get that, I guess is what I'm saying. It's already made that twist in the yarn. And then you want a solid color, and that's just going to be the border around the dishcloth. And the finished size for this is eight by eight inches. And then all the skills that are required are a chain, a single crochet, and then a slip stitch. So very, very beginner friendly. And she says that you can get three dish cloths with just one skein of the dishy yarn. So this would be a really good idea to gift your mom. And also you might snag one for yourself, just give her two and try out your own dish cloth. And then the next pattern, like I said, is by the same lady, Melissa, from Woods and Wool, and it's the Pico dishcloth and hand towel. And this one is, I just think it's really pretty because of the Pico stitch that's along the border. I just think it adds a uh, daintiness to it. It looks a little more elegant, which I think would be a really good gift for Mother's Day. This pattern also uses Dishy by Knit Picks, and you need two colors. So choose the colors that match Mom's Kitchen. Then in the blog post, you get the two patterns and one, and you will get one of each for the yarn that's listed there. So the finished size for the dish cloth is about eight and a quarter inches uh, by eight and a quarter inches, so it's a square. And then the dish towel is about 24 and a half inches long by 14 inches wide and the skills that are required for this one are the chain the single crochet the extended single crochet which sounds difficult but she has written instructions and it's very easy to follow i tried it out myself and also the pico stitch but have no fear, she has created a video and she shows you exactly how to make that pico stitch. And then the last one is the slip stitch. So I think if you want to branch out a little bit and make these, I think it's a very beginner friendly project. Uh, you just have to, uh, you just want to familiarize yourself with the pico stitch and watch that video um, just to see how to do it. I also wanted to throw in pot holders here just because I made a few in the last year. Um, it was pandemic time and I got bored and I had a lot of yarn so I was testing out pot holders. So um, this one was just made with um, a multicolored skein of yarn. It was just a cotton worsted weight yarn. 
Uh, there's really easy tutorials to show you how to make this one. Also, I tried out felting. You just need uh, wool yarn. And all I did was hold a strand of the teal and then a strand of gray together. And I just used the single or half double crochet, I don't remember. And then I just uh, felted it. You just um, rub the fibers together and you get a really thick pot holder. And I really like this one. I use it probably the most. And then if you have any bulky weight yarn on hand, actually this one didn't require a ton. Um, maybe like three quarters, a half a skein, I can't remember. But I just used a half double crochet and then um, I was able to make this one and it's really thick. And this one works really well as two. Uh, so yeah, you might add pot holders to that list. Unfortunately, I don't have any patterns written for these, but you can make up your own or just search on YouTube. I know that there's a lot because that's how I made uh, this one. So that concludes kitchen accessories. So let's move on to the next pattern idea, which is earrings. So earrings are really great projects because one, they don't take up that many materials. Two, they don't take up too much of your time. And also, you're gonna have a lot of yarn left over, so if you like what you made, you can always make yourself a pair as well. So I actually have a pattern for these pineapple earrings. It was actually my first tutorial to film ever, so <laughs> give me some credit if you go watch that one. It's listed on my YouTube channel. But um, if you wanna give mom something that she can wear maybe during the summer or honestly all year round. I wear them all the time. I didn't wear them today. I should have them. Um, I can go grab them. Oh, sorry, I forgot uh, to grab them. So pineapple earrings. Um, I think they're really cute. I originally made mine for my sister and I to match because we love the TV show Psych and the pineapple is a running joke in that show. And yeah, so I originally made these for her but I think they're really cute and um, they look really cute on. The materials that you need are the fish hook um, earrings, I think that's what they're called, like this part, so that you can wear them. And then you need um, DMC floss or crochet thread of the green and the yellow. And then all I used was, I think the half double crochet and then the chain stitch. So that's a really easy pattern to follow. Also, uh, probably about a year ago, maybe even longer. I actually compiled a list of earrings, I think 15 different patterns into one blog post. So I'll make sure to link that down below so you can go check it out. But I just wanted to highlight a few of them. So I navigated over to my blog post and this is kind of how it's laid out. And my first pattern that I found that I really love is the French hoop earrings by Knits and Knots. And if you go below the photo, you can click on her blog and it'll take you right to the free tutorial. And you can see here that they have a very bohemian vibe to them. I just really like the look of them. And she has all of the materials listed, which are very minimal. And then she has a tutorial to go along with it that have pictures and written. This next one is the Dangle Flower Earrings by Hannah Crochet and Design. I just think these are gorgeous. They would take a lot more time to crochet, but I just think they speak for themselves. They're just beautiful. And then if we keep going here, there's crochet flower earrings that are beautiful. Then these fringe statement earrings. Apparently, I really liked the fringe when I made this blog post. But these are by Persia Lou, and they're a lot of fun. You need just a few materials. You crochet two half circles and then two circles. Then you stiffen them with fabric stiffener, add the fringe to the sides, and then you just glue them together. This was a really simple design and I just think they're gorgeous. And then next up we have the beaded fan earrings, which are very unique. And then these jingle hoop earrings. I really like these. Um, they look like a lot of fun to make. Then we have teardrop earrings, which have a beautiful design, which it looks like you could add beads as well. Then here's another fringe one, but it's a lot of fun. It's by Crafty Loop, and I have her blog post listed there as well. 
And if you navigate down, she'll have the list of materials. And then she also has a picture tutorial on how to make these statement earrings. So you can see there, there's not a whole lot of materials. And you basically just crochet around the rope until you have enough around it. And then you just um, undo the rope and it creates this fringe. And then we have these beaded flower dangle earrings, which are a lot of fun. More boho earrings <laughs> that have fringe on them. And then there's these half circle earrings that I believe are just crocheted into like this half circle. It's a fun looking design. And this last design with the buttons I really liked and thought that they were very unique as well. So I hope that those inspire you to Look for a pattern that would interest your mom that would be more her style for the earrings. Now, my mom actually doesn't have her ears pierced, so this category definitely doesn't apply to me. She wouldn't, um, she wouldn't wear them. She used to wear those clip-ons, but I think those are out of style now. I don't know, but, um, but yeah, so if your mom wears earrings, then I definitely uh, encourage you to look for a pattern because those are really simple to make. The next idea is shawls, and these are great if you have a little bit more time to spend on crocheting, or if you're just a fashion crocheter, then you definitely might consider making your mom a shawl for Mother's Day. Uh, these are great because um, since Mother's Day is in May, um, you can make a lacy one where she can wear it in the spring and summertime. So shawls are easy to make and they come in a lot of different shapes. You can make a semicircle, you can make a triangle, you can make a rectangle. Really the sky's the limit with shawls and there are a lot of patterns out there. So there's definitely gonna be one that you can choose that fits your mom's style. Now this is another thing that my mom won't wear because she doesn't uh, like a lot of layers because she gets super hot so unfortunately um, this wouldn't be a project idea that I would consider but I found a lot of really pretty shawls that I myself would like to crochet. There's a lot of love that goes into making a shawl so I think that these are really good gifts for Mother's Day just to show that you were thinking about her while you were making it and uh, just that she spent the time to make her something gorgeous uh, and that she would wear, I think that she would really appreciate that. So all of the patterns that I chose, except for one in this category, are by the same person. Um, I just love all of the designs from her website. Um, so it's from Expression Fiber Arts, and her name is Shandy. So the first one is called Renata, which I've got to look at my screen here because I like what was written here. So this was a note from the designer and it says, Renata meaning reborn, spring and its new growth. The motifs in the shawl resemble tiny flower buds in neat little rows, like they're emerging from the soil in a carefully planted garden. Clusters of tight flower petals on display inside of the decorative iron garden fences. Just imagine the light breeze and hear the sounds of the songbirds. I just really like that description of it. I think it's perfect for this shawl. It's, and I think it's really great for Mother's Day too. So this is a rectangle shawl. It's made with a fingering weight yarn, about 1400 yards total. And then the sizing, um, there's four sizes that are available. And those are listed on the website there. It's an intermediate level pattern is what they consider this one. But the only stitches that it mentions is double crochet multiples together. So I think that if you are a beginner and you're a little more, um, not curious, but um, Maybe if you're a more adventurous beginner, then this might be a pattern for you if you're okay with um, pushing yourself and maybe learning uh, new skills for this one. But this is a free pattern from her website. And again, I just think it's a really good shawl for the springtime and the summertime as well. So next up is Sugar Blush, and this is also from Expression Fiber Arts. 
and you can find this one on their website. It's a triangle shawl and it looks to be a little thicker than the previous one. There's one size and it uses a sport weight yarn. So it is a little bit thicker than the previous pattern that I showed you. This one says that it is a beginner level pattern and it only uses simple stitches. It's um, the single crochet worked into the back loop. So that's a really simple stitch for um, really any skill level to do. So I really like this idea for a Mother's Day gift. So I want to show you one more of her designs and it is called Adeline. And it's a rectangular shawl but the edges aren't straight. They're um, pointed. So this one is crocheted using pineapples. That's just what that stitch is called or the combination of stitches. I guess that's con considered a motif. And it's a really fun looking shawl. So you could really impress mom by giving her this one. It looks very advanced, but the pattern was only made up of very simple stitches. So I don't know if you've worked with pineapples before. Um, that's just what that motif is called. Um, I've done it years ago, but I don't recall it being very difficult. So. Uh, you can watch her tutorial actually, um, she made a tutorial for this shawl, uh, but you can also purchase the pattern from her website, and um, in the photos you can also see that the shawl can be worn many, many ways. You can wear it, you know, over the shoulders like you would a shawl, or as uh, maybe a bandana, uh, like a cowl, I guess, uh, you can wear it that way as well. And then the pattern description also says that you don't have to worry about running out of yarn. So pretty much you can use whatever yarn you have in stash and then it's a repeating pattern. So whenever you run out of yarn, you can just stop the shawl. And then, um, so it can be very, um, a lot of different sizes, I guess. So I definitely consider this pattern for Mother's Day. And then finally, we have this pattern called Apricot Rose, and this is by Annie's Crochet. And it's on their blog, it's a free pattern there. And this one, this one is a semicircle shawl. It's really pretty, it has this kind of lacy look to it, and it's made top down. It would be perfect for the springtime. And there is a picture tutorial on how to get started. And then there's also a chart with all of the stitch numbers for um, adding uh, more rows to the shawl as you go. Um, and again, you can get this for free from their blog or you can also purchase it from Ravelry, which is how I found it actually. They classify it as an easy level pattern and it uses the double crochet and the puff stitch. And if you've never done the puff stitch, they have written instructions and then there's also pictures, I believe, in that post. And then there is one size for how it's written. It says that it's 66 inches long by 30 inches deep. So I think that this was a really cute pattern and it would be really great for a Mother's Day gift as well. Now we can get to our final category of patterns and that is spa items. Now, if you watched my crochet stash busting project video, you'll know that this was one of the categories in there as well. I put this one in here too because I think that it's also fitting for Mother's Day gifts. And I did choose different patterns. Um, so if you want to also see the other patterns that I listed in the other video, go watch that video. And I have timestamps for all of those things. So you can just jump right up right to the spa items. So what I was thinking with this one is that you don't just crochet her a spa kit, um, which you can, I'll show you a pattern in just a minute that I think is really great for that. But I was thinking that you could crochet one or two um, items and then make a little gift basket and maybe add a gift card. You could add candles to it, add bath salts, uh, you know, just make a cute gift basket and then give that to mom. And you could also give a gift card to a massage or if mom likes to get her nails done, maybe give her a gift card with that and just slide that into the gift basket as well. So keep that in mind as I show you some of these patterns. So first up is called the Farmhouse Spa Set and this one is by Sunflower Cottage Crochet. 
and this is like a full set it comes with four different patterns that you can make for mom it has the washcloth the um, a soap saver a poof or a loofah and then it also comes with a basket that you can put all of these items in so this one's really your one-stop shop if you just want to do a spa um, set for mom um, and then like I was saying maybe just add like a gift card or something like that maybe a candle as well just slide that in there and give that to her so this pattern calls for worsted weight cotton yarn and that is for the washcloth the soap saver and then the poof or the little loofah and then you need a jumbo weight yarn to crochet the basket so these are also items that you could just do individually just pick the one that you like and then crochet that and again just um, give it in conjunction with something else or just gift it by itself next up is the bobble stitch uh, crochet soap saver pouch sorry i couldn't remember the full thing and this one is by Savlabat, and you just need a cotton yarn for this one. And the stitches that are used are the double crochet, a half double crochet, single crochet slip stitch, and then a double crochet bobble stitch, and then a back loop single crochet. Now those last two stitches, are, there are videos that she created specifically showing you how to make those stitches so you won't be left hanging at all you'll get the full thing you'll know how to crochet this uh, little soap saver pouch i think it's really cute and you can always choose a uh, color maybe your mom has a favorite color just uh, do that or a neutral color whatever with the soap saver you could also gift her a nice bar of soap and uh, you could also pair it with a candle, with a book, with a chocolate bar, um, a gift card for a massage or a manicure, pedicure, whatever. Um, you know, the sky's the limit. Just uh, get creative with this and you could create a whole gift set or just give her the soap and the soap saver. And finally, you could also crochet these cute face scrubbies by Sarah Maker. Um, these are very simple, round face scrubbies, and you could give these to mom to replace her face wipes if that's what she uses to get her makeup off. Um, these face scrubbies are really great because you can wash them and reuse them. You need a worsted weight cotton yarn for these face scrubbies, um, and good options would be Lily Sugar and Cream, or Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton. I also found a cotton, I can't remember, it was by Loops and Threads, I got it from Michaels and it came in like a really big uh, skein. So uh, there's a lot of cotton yarns out there and there's a lot of different colors. So you can choose one that mom would like. And the size of these face scrubbies are almost four inches, but you could always change that you can make them bigger or smaller just depending on your preference this is an easy level crochet pattern and uh, you'll need to know the puff stitch which there are written instructions for that one the single crochet and then also the slip stitch but again i think that these would be a good project or a good gift to give by themselves or to add to something and then give that to mom um, uh, all together in like a gift set. So those are all of the patterns and project ideas that I have for you guys today. I really hope that you are inspired to go out and crochet your mom a Mother's Day gift. And if you like any of these project ideas, please let me know in the comments which one you plan on making. I already showed you what I did with my mom, so let me know what you're going to do. And if you liked any of these ideas, also give me a like. That really helps out my channel a lot. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.